Hey guys, Jeff Ross Purple here. Thanks so much for tuning in virtually to the Union County Heritage Festival. Today, I'm gonna show you how to tackle butternut squash. And sometimes this baby is a little intimidating when you see it at the grocery store. They sell it all chopped up. You can buy it spiralized, but get yourself a fresh one. Learn how to chop it up. You'll save yourself a ton of money. You can use it, chop it up, leave it in the fridge, roast it later. I'm gonna show you how to break this baby down. And then I'm gonna take the roasted butternut squash that I made and I'm gonna put it into a mac and cheese that I think the kids are gonna love. They're not even gonna know the butternut squash is in there. It's gonna bring a subtle sweetness to the whole deal. All right, so first things first, what you wanna do is you get yourself a nice wet towel, put it under your cutting board so that it's not gonna wiggle around. Definitely wanna get a nice dirty flat surface. We're gonna cut both the ends off. And then what I like to do, you'll see, this is a bulb part. All the seeds are in here and all of that's just your nice meaty flesh. So what I like to do is just cut it right down. Set that guy off to the side. And then what I'll do, nice and simple, just get the peeling. Peel this guy down. All right, so I'm almost finished from peeling this baby up. And then what I'll do is I'll switch over to the bulb and uh, I'll just grab the bulb. Same thing, kind of make a little round edge here on both sides. And then you'll just kind of get it down and do it. You know, just be careful with your hands, careful with the fingers. If you really are afraid of this, just buy it chopped up. All right, so once you're peeled up, you're gonna get it. Now, what I always recommend is anytime you have food that's a little gonna roll around, you wanna get it on a flat, flat, make sure you've got one side that's definitely flat. We're gonna cut down. I want these cubes to be about an inch. So I'm just gonna cut these guys. And then again, flat surface. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your time, keep your fingers out of the way. And then you're gonna have all very, very consistent size cubes. And even sometimes I notice at the grocery store, they're just kinda all hacked up and they're different sizes. But I'll tell you, when you start to roast it, that's one thing in cooking that I've always learned. You've got to have consistency. So if one piece is, say, this big, compared to my little guys over here, what do you think is gonna happen? So these guys are gonna burn, and this guy's gonna barely be cooked. All right, so I'm gonna finish chopping these guys up, get them all in the bowl. All right, so one thing I should show you that's really just a good technique to have in general is we, we call it the tiger claw. So you wanna kinda create this flat area for your knuckles, and you can bring your knife right in. And the part of the knife right here, we call that the sweet spot. And that's really the part of the knife that's gonna do all of the work. So that rock chop motion when you're cutting up fine vegetables and stuff like that. But so I've got my tiger claw. I can feel confident that, you know, the knife is right up against my, the tips of my fingers and then I'm not gonna cut myself. So flat cutting board, flat food, stable, you're rocking and rolling. All right, you're gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil. I like to use the extra virgin. I would say not much more than about two tablespoons. So I've got a little bit of, it's a McCormick, roasted garlic and onion seasoning. It's got paprika in there. It's got some other herbs and spices. And then it does have a little bit of salt in there. So I'm gonna wanna salt just a little bit. I'd say like maybe that was about half a teaspoon of the uh, roasted garlic and onion mix and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. But do that to taste. Uh, especially if we're gonna use it in a recipe like this where you're gonna have all kinds of other layers of flavor, you definitely wanna make sure that this squash itself is well seasoned. All right, perfect. So now I'm gonna pop it in a Pyrex baking dish, pop it in the oven. I like to start the oven real high, 450, 500. And then after about 10 minutes, you're gonna start to see some caramelization toss it with a spatula, and then lower the temperature down to about 350 and let it bake until it's nice and tender. I would say a nice hunk like this is gonna take probably 20 minutes. All right, so basically I'm gonna make a real quick roux, and this is a great, 
combination of fat and flour, equal parts. So I'm gonna start with maybe about a tablespoon of the olive oil, extra virgin I like, and then about two tablespoons of butter. I like to suggest when you're buying butter at the grocery store, buy unsalted, because you really don't know how much salt is in it or what kind of salt. And uh, one of the biggest killers in America is iodized table salt. So if you've got some in your pantry, throw it out, go buy yourself some kosher, or buy yourself some sea salt. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna melt down this butter and olive oil, we're gonna get that going. And then to that, I am literally just gonna grate some onion. This is a big onion. So I've only got about a quarter of it. All right, after I get the grated onion in there, I'm gonna take some fresh thyme. Now, um, most plants grow up to the sun. So the little petals, the flowers, we can literally just kind of strip those guys right off of there. If you got one up at the top, you can try to slide it. You definitely don't want this thick stem. It's very bitter. It's not fun to get stuck in your teeth. So just a couple of sprigs of fresh thyme. And then one great thing that you could do is you could take these stems, throw them in with some bay leaf and some carrots and onions and celery, make yourself some homemade chicken stock. The flowers themselves, the little thyme leaves, aren't really that um, tough, but give them a little rough chop. They're gonna soften up. We're gonna add this right in with that grated onion. So you can see at this point, at this point, you've got maybe like a half a, table, uh, half a teaspoon. Get that right in there. All right, so we're on like medium heat right now. The onions are starting to sizzle away. You can smell it, very fragrant at the time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some all-purpose flour and I'm just gonna sprinkle this in. This was about three tablespoons. And that was about how much of that butter and olive oil that I have. But I want to make sure that I don't add it all right away because I don't want this to be too thick. I'm looking good, so I'm just going to add the rest of that in there. Now, you're going to want to let this cook to cook out some of that raw flour taste. Say like one to two minutes for like a blonde roux. And if you really want like a robust flavor, if you're making like a red sauce or a gravy that's gonna be a little bit more of an earthy taste, you can let your roux cook for five minutes. You'd wanna do that on a little bit of a lower temperature because the flour will burn. All right, so once I've got that, it's been about two minutes. I'm gonna add to this a cup of chicken broth. And that's that homemade stuff that I did. I sometimes will take a rotisserie chicken that I get for $4.99 on Sundays, and uh, I'll just save all the bones. A lot of that chicken skin, um, and I just make my own broth. If you don't have a pressure cooker, or you don't wanna spend all day you know, hovering over your stock pot, a slow cooker works just as well. After we get the chicken stock in there, I'm going to add a cup of half and half. You could use milk, skim milk, whatever you prefer. Sometimes I'll use a little heavy cream if I'm feeling indulgent. We're going to bring this up to a boil and it's going to start to thicken up. All right, so after it came to a boil, I reduced the heat down to a simmer. I let that go for about three to five minutes and it's thickened up a little bit. I've got some mac that I've uh, cooked up ahead of time. And then what I like to do is I'll drain it, put it in some ice water and then drain that, make sure that there's not a ton of water and then I'll use a little bit of a neutral flavored oil so that it doesn't stick. And then you can pop that in the freezer. You know, for your pasta salad, you can make that a day ahead for a dish like this. And then what's great too, is sometimes the kids just want to eat macaroni and butter and Parmesan. So you just have some of that ready to roll, throw it in the microwave for like 30 seconds, they're rocking. Perfect, once you get your mac in there, you're gonna take about two cups of shredded cheese. I like a nice sharp cheddar sometimes. I like a little bit of Colby Jack. The kids like the pepper jack. 
Once you get that rolling, you're gonna just melt this in. It won't really need any extra heat at this point, so I'm just gonna go ahead and shut the burner off. And then you're gonna take and you're gonna to add to this about 10 ounces of the roasted butternut squash that I did up. About half a cup of Parmesan. All right, so once we have all those other ingredients in, uh, the recipe that I found called for a little bit of nutmeg, but since it's fall, I'm gonna use some pumpkin spice. Just a little bit, just a dash, maybe like a quarter of a teaspoon. You definitely don't want it to overpower. And then I love a good smoked paprika. Just a little bit, same thing. So you're gonna mix all those things in there. Look at that, nice and cheesy. Oof, the kids are gonna love this. And you won't even notice this butternut squash in it. The recipe I can make available on chefpurple.com. We'll try to get it up on the website for the Heritage Festival. And uh, maybe we could even post it while you're watching the video and you can jot it down or take a screenshot. All right. All right, so now we've got it in our baking dish. You could bake this with maybe some Ritz crackers on top uh, or a little bit of extra cheese, but I think we got enough going on in there. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of pumpkin seeds on here. And then if you had something else that you wanted to garnish it with, it's all about being creative. I don't know, I, I say that recipes are just suggested guidelines. Love to make stuff my own, even just by adding that pumpkin spice instead of the nutmeg. Um, and I think that the kids are gonna love this. It's nice and simple. I would just serve this right as it is. Thanks so much for tuning in and joining us virtually for the Union County Heritage Festival. I'm Chef Ross Purple. You can find me online, social media, at Chef Ross Purple, and my website, chefpurple.com. I'm a private chef in the greater Charlotte area. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the rest of all that the Heritage Festival has to offer. Have a great day. Oh, that's pretty good. What do you think? Do you taste the pumpkin spice? Mm. Tastes like fall.